I'd like to introduce our host tonight, Ahmed Ahmed. Give him a round of applause. How you doing, Avalon? How about a hand for Tom Morello, everybody? Tom Morello, yeah. Thanks for coming out to the Access of Justice. How about a hand for the guys who put this together? Not only Tom Morello, but Surge from System Up and Down. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm going to be your host tonight. I'm going to be introducing the bands, but I'm also a stand-up comedian, so I want to tell you guys a little bit about myself before I begin. My name really is Ahmed Ahmed, and uh, I can't fucking fly anywhere. <laughs> Sucks. You guys think that's funny? <laughs> well, what? You guys have it easy. You guys get to the airport like an hour, two hours before your flight? It takes me a month and a half. The security's gotten so bad, now we just show up to the airport in a G-string. Hey, how you guys doing? Turn around, no problem, you got it. By the time they don't search me, I make enough money in tips I can pay for my airfare. I read a statistic on uh, CBS.com, now get this, I read a statistic on CBS.com that said hate crimes against Arabs and Muslims went up over a thousand percent right after 9-11, which uh, still put us in fourth place behind blacks, gays, and Jews. It's true. So what do we have to do? <laughs> Thank you, some of you guys got that. I'm just saying we can't even win in hatred. I got pulled off the plane because they're always doing those random checks, random checks, random checks. I'm like, uh, when I fly, I always get checked. How random is that? You guys have been pulled off the plane? I was actually pulled off the damn plane. Somebody from the ticket counter walks over. Mr. Ahmed, we're gonna have to pull you off the plane. We have some questions we wanna ask you. I said, that's cool, my name's Ahmed. I know what's going on, I'll get out of my seat. As I'm getting out of my seat, the two women sitting next to me were like, I thought he was Mexican. <laughs> we were sitting next to Al-Qaeda the whole time. I said, I'll be right back, just save my peanuts, I'll be right back. So I get escorted down to the ticket counter, and I show the woman my ID, I get the same reaction. Every time a woman takes my ID, she does one of these. <laughs> Mr. Ahmed, uh, did you pack your bags yourself? Yes. Anybody ask you to carry anything since you've been in the airport? Nope. Have your bags left your site since you've been in the airport? Nope. You're under arrest. Code red, code red. We've got a saying, I mean, an Arab at Terminal 4. Code red, Arab at Terminal 4. And uh, he's a hairy one. Get over here quickly. <laughs> uh, Terminal 4, we'll be right there. We're still searching this black guy, this gay guy, and this Jew. <laughs> Thank you. You're listening. <laughs> the worst is... Uh, I got frustrated at the ticket counter, so I popped the question. I said, excuse me, miss, I'm in a little bit of a hurry. Can we move this process along? She goes, what's your rush, Mr. Ahmed? What's your rush? Why are you trying to get on the plane so quickly? What's your rush? I said, I have a show. What kind of show, Mr. Ahmed? I'm a comedian. Oh, you're a comedian. Is that so? <laughs> Say something funny. I <sighs> uh, just graduated from flight school. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege and honor to introduce Knowledge. Come on. Right here in this rhyme, the question has been posed. Why was the diplomatic solution to the Iraqi crisis all but closed? In going to war, Bush committed a grave error. Iraqi civilians suffering stress from heart attacks caused by sheer terror. All the shit I read got me steaming. A mother's eight-year-old daughter dead. Why do you do this to us? She kept on screaming. All of them victims of Bush's mad scheme. The maimed and the wounded, a growing stream. A bomb in a marketplace killed 15. Pro-war, anti-war. Which way do you lean? The bride of a couple that was newlywed. Dead. Israel has weapons of mass destruction. But Bush wasn't trying to stop their production. Iraq said to have many, but the weapons inspectors never found any. 
to George Bush's war was a serious breach of international law. North Korea announced its long-range missiles to reach parts of the US, but Iraq is a country that's causing the stress. Hussein's military is smaller than it was a decade ago, so why did Bush feel the need to put on a show of force? Weapons inspections would have worked in due course. Case closed. Hussein grew weaker as more weapons were exposed. Weapons inspections will always reveal nuclear arms which are hard to conceal. Inspection, surveillance, telephone tapping. These things ensure they were never caught napping. So what I have to say now, some may be very resistant. But Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11, according to John F. Kennedy's special assistant. We didn't object to Hussein's human rights atrocities when he went to war with Iran. So humane intervention could have been part of the plan. Many Arabs hate Hussein, but they hate American policy even more. And that's why it was retarded for Bush to go to war. One Shiite said that it isn't liberation. Call a spade a spade and acknowledge that it's occupation. Even the Shiites who rose up against Hussein in 91 are mad as hell at George Bush's son. The body of a woman buried under rubble. Bush stirred a hornet's nest, there's going to be trouble. A 53-year-old oil ministry employee came from work to find his home was nothing more than debris. Why won't I go along with George Bush's views? Because I read that the employee's wife died and his two nephews. Akil Khalil sobbing and asking why his wife and his mother had to die. British colonialism is what led to terrorism. That and decades of unfriendly and short-sighted foreign policy pissed off and stressed out many in Iraqi. Bush and his cronies got caught faking an atomic energy agency report. A nuclear arms program that was six months away, but we attacked Iraq and still didn't see these bombs on display. A Bush Blair confidence trick faked a report, thought they were slick. The United Nations was formed partly to abolish preemptive war. This is a fact that George Bush chose to ignore. Serge, I'm privileged to have Serge. Obviously, you know, as I mean, he's going to accompany me and uh, we're going to represent on this one together. <coughs> Who, after all, speaks the day of the Armenians? Adolf Hitler, August 22nd, 1939. How the hell do you hide a one and a half million people genocide? The first major genocide of the 20th century. Genocide in Africa, Latin America and Asia. Sick and twisted minds decide I have to erase you. 60 million dead in this century as a result. Parents sacrificing their lives so that their children might live. Receiving all the food and water that their parents had to give. An abandoned infant crying. All around me my people dying. Dying from brutality and dehydration. Exposure, disease and starvation. A baby being to death just for sport, stripped of their clothes, walking naked under a burning sun for days without food and water, scorched by thirst. You haven't heard the worst. Starving and emaciated, unspeakable tortures in which they were mutilated, given food after so long they forgot how to eat. Hundreds upon hundreds dying in the brutal heat. The genocide of 1915. Man, was that an ugly scene. A hundred years ago, over two million Armenians lived in Turkey, now less than 100,000. It was in 1894 that the Turks and Kurds got war, killed too many Armenians for the world to ignore. The reason for so much hate? The Turks felt that the Armenians would dominate and create a separate state. In two years, 100,000 killed, so much blood spilled. Total extermination was attempted 20 years later. Before they were harmed, the Armenians were disarmed and forced to dig their own graves. Deportees refused access to water. The men taken away and shot like lambs to the slaughter. Bodies put in wells, covered with lime and soil. Just reading about it made my blood boil. A couple burned to charcoal, still locked in an embrace. One man killed on his horse, then they cut off his face. Some burned so bad that their skin turned black. One man's face covered in mucus, a child on his back. Lies in his nose, his mouth, and his eyes. But the Turks say Armenians are telling us lies. 
Grass boiled in water, mixed with cracked wheat. Sometimes this is all that they had to eat. Survivors eating just about anything they could find, forced to leave their loved ones and relatives behind. Even when their water sources they weren't allowed to drink. Thousands of corpses giving off a terrible stink. Corpses as far as the eye could see. A baby abandoned under the shade of a tree or left along the roadside to die. Who, after all, speaks the day of the Armenians and of Hitler, August 22nd, 1939. Good evening. test tonight's the time I am the punishment that fits the crime I'll break the bricks I'll pick the locks I don't got nothing but I'll give what I got I'll never turn I'll never bend I'm with you now Until the end Ten trials whose outcomes All fixed from the start Nine judges sitting counting Their money in the dark Eight towers of iron Surround the desert town On a cold December morning Seven martyrs knock them down Four fathers still waiting For their five sons to come home Six mothers who know better And accept that they're gone Four years I've been hunted Still I breathe free Three times I shot the sheriff and did not spare the deputy. Two prayers I'm praying until we're together. One promise I'm keeping tonight and forever. I'll never turn. I'll never bend. I'm with you now Until the end I'll never turn I'll never bend I'm with you now Until the end
Thank you. took my name. Man, she sounded scared. So I counted my misfortunes. I added up the blame. I picked through all the garbage. I checked off all the names. I read in the newspaper. They questioned all my friends. Hoped that they could find me before I talk again. And I sang to myself that I want to be free. But the road
hard to believe. You were struggling for me, violence. We were struggling for me, silence. I do believe. You were struggling for me, violence. We were struggling for me, silence. We are deceived. All the toys of our convenience. Opening our hearts to the brilliance. We are deceived. All the toys of our convenience. Opening our hearts to the brilliance. Love is strong. Hearing its loudest come fire away. Constantly dreaming of another way. Love is wrong. Go ahead and end the world with your charades. Never wrong. Constantly dreaming of another way. Could I get some more piano, please? I do believe. You are strong in farming violence. We are strong in farming silence. I do believe. You are strong in farming violence. We are strong performing silence. We are deceived. All the toys of our convenience. Opening our hearts to the brilliance. We are deceived. All the toys of our convenience. Opening our hearts to the brilliance. Love is strong. Hearing its loudest come fire away. Never wrong. Constantly dreaming of another way. If love is wrong, go ahead and end the world with your charades. Never wrong. Constantly dreaming of another, 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 Find me a red bag, one without a tag. Hope that you are here, valiantly appear. Find me a red bag.
track of our arms hold they hang suspended and we listen one last time and we got one last look it's holding and swallowed until spelling ended Yeah. 
What's past is past, but the future's unwritten. History from this moment forward is yours to make.
you guys for coming out to the Axis of Justice concert series. We have the power to change our lives and the world around us. Thank you.